Welcome back into the world of cross-dressing stories. Now, please consider subscribing and check out my Patreon for more exclusive goodies. In the humid embrace of Biloxi's summer in 1995, nestled among the whispering pines and the slow churn of the Mississippi coast, our protagonist John found solace in solitude. He had recently ended a tumultuous relationship, a love fractured by misunderstandings over his secret, a secret draped in silk and shadow. She had once indulged his clandestine yearnings, teaching him the delicate art of makeup and the transformative magic of women's clothing. Yet, what began as playful experimentation soured, leaving John to navigate his desires alone. His modest apartment became a sanctuary where John could explore the breadth of his identity without fear of judgment or scorn. Night after night, he stood before a second-hand mirror, brush in hand, tracing the contours of his face with practiced ease, the foundation smoothed over his stubble, eyeshadow blended into a smoky allure, and lipstick painted in bold strokes, all acts of defiance against his daytime persona. Each piece of clothing he slipped into, whether a flowing skirt, delicate blouse, or lace lingerie, was a piece of armor, a declaration of his hidden self. He relished the softness of the fabrics against his skin, the way the dresses hugged his body, affirming a part of him long suppressed. With each outfit, he stepped further away from John and closer to Julia, his chosen name echoing through the quiet corners of his living space. Julia practiced walking in heels, a precarious ballet of balance and grace across the creaky wooden floors. She twirled, admired her reflection, and for those fleeting moments, the weight of judgment and expectation lifted. Here in the privacy of his home, John became Julia, not just dressed as a woman, but living as herself, each step in stilettos, a step towards acceptance. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across Biloxi, Julia's courage swelled. The empty streets beckoned, promising the thrill of the night air against her legs, the freedom of anonymity under the cover of darkness. Each night, as she undid the locks and cracked open the door, a mix of fear and excitement pulsed through her veins. Tonight, perhaps, she might finally step outside, embrace the world as Julia, and see her reflection, not just in a mirror, but in the eyes of the world. But fear, that cruel gatekeeper, often clamped down her courage, chaining Julia inside. Yet with each evening, her resolve grew, stitching courage into the seams of her being, preparing for the night she would finally walk the streets of Biloxi, her heels clicking a rhythm of liberation on the pavement. Julia's heart raced as she peered through the slightly ajar door her hand resting on the cold metal of the knob, hesitating. Each night she'd prepared herself, stepping into the persona of Julia with more determination, her makeup flawless, her outfit meticulously chosen. Yet the threshold of her safe haven had always felt like a barrier too daunting to cross. Tonight, however, there was a stirring within her, a whisper of courage that felt louder than the cautionary beats of her heart. She had chosen her outfit with care, a denim skirt that brushed just above her knees, paired with a crisp white blouse that fluttered slightly in the draft from the open window. The simplicity of the outfit belied the complexity of her emotions. This was not just fabric and color, it was Julia's declaration of self, a testament to her hidden truths. Taking a deep breath, Julia adjusted her skirt, smoothed down her blouse, and finally stepped outside. The door clicked softly behind her, as if sealing away the persona of John until she returned. The night air greeted her like a long-lost friend, cool against her legs, invigorating her soul. She walked timidly at first, her steps unsure, a stark contrast to the confident strides she took within the confines of her apartment. The streets of Biloxi were quiet, almost reverent under the moon's watchful eye. Julia's heels tapped a cautious rhythm on the pavement, each click echoing down the empty streets, marking her progress like a metronome of bravery. She felt the eyes of the night on her, the moon and stars bearing witness to her transformation. As she walked further from her apartment, her confidence began to swell. The initial flutter of fear gave way to a soaring thrill, a mix of liberation and defiance. Julia wasn't just walking, she was reclaiming spaces, each step a stitch in the fabric of her identity. The breeze seemed to whisper encouragements, urging her onward, and she found herself walking with a newfound elegance. The freedom of the night was intoxicating, 
With no prying eyes or harsh judgments, Julia felt a purity in her expression that she'd never known before. The street turned from concrete to a canvas of self-expression, her shadow dancing beside her, a companion in her nocturnal confession. She ventured farther than she ever had, past the familiar landmarks, crossing the threshold of her usual boundaries. The deserted streets welcomed her, devoid of spectators, yet full of presence. Julia embraced the night, her heart pounding not from fear, but from exhilaration. For the first time, she wasn't hiding. She was existing, boldly and beautifully as her true self. Tonight, Julia discovered more than the courage to step outside. She found the freedom to be seen, and in the quiet streets of Biloxi, she danced under the moonlight, a silhouette of joy in a world that had yet to understand her. The night was hers, and so was the newfound path she walked, a path paved with the promises of many more moonlit ventures. With each successful nocturnal outing, Julia's confidence began to soar. The world outside her apartment, once a vast expanse of uncertainty, started to shrink into something more manageable, more inviting. As she grew more comfortable in her expression, her adventures became less about testing boundaries and more about embracing them fully. One crisp evening, emboldened by her newfound assurance, Julia ventured toward the old fishing pier, a place she had always seen as a boundary of her previous restraints. The wooden planks creaked under her steps, a symphony to her boldness. The salty air mingled with her perfume, creating a heady mix that seemed to encapsulate her spirit. Standing at the edge of the pier, she looked out over the water, her silhouette bathed in moonlight, feeling as limitless as the ocean itself. However, not all her outings went unnoticed. One night, as she returned from a particularly liberating walk, her landlord's dog, Ever the Sentinel, began barking furiously as she approached her building. Her heart thudded in her chest as she saw the lights flick on in her landlord's window. Quick thinking and quicker on her feet, she darted into the shadows, her breaths shallow and rapid as she waited for the quiet to return. It was a close call, too close, and it reminded her of the precarious balance she maintained. The thrill of her outings was tinged with these brushes with discovery, each adding a layer of urgency and excitement to her nocturnal explorations. Yet, it was an encounter one balmy night that would test her in ways she hadn't anticipated. Dressed in a striking red sweater that set off the softness of her features, Julia walked with a brisk pace, her heels confident against the asphalt. Her path took her further into the heart of the city, where the night was more alive, the streets lit by the neon buzz of late-night haunts. It was here that she drew the unwanted attention of a passerby, a man whose intentions were clouded by the late hour and his own expectations. He circled back several times, his car creeping along beside her. Need a lift? He called out, his voice slick with insinuation. Julia kept her gaze forward, her steps steady. No, thank you, she replied, her voice a blend of fear and defiance. But the man persisted, mistaking her politeness for coyness. Come on, it's late for a lady to be out walking alone, he pressed, a hint of amusement in his tone. Each word from him was a reminder of the dangers she faced, not just of discovery, but of misunderstanding and the consequences it could bring. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, he drove off, leaving Julia to quicken her pace, her heart racing not just from her brisk walk, but also from the ordeal. Though shaken, she was also strangely validated. The man had seen her as a woman, nothing more or less. This incident, while frightening, strangely affirmed her identity, complicating her feelings about her dual existence. It was both a victory and a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities she faced. Each step now carried not just the weight of her own identity, but the heavy realization of the world's perception. Her outings weren't just acts of self-expression. They were acts of courage in a world that didn't yet understand or accept her truth. On a night shrouded in the inky depths of uncertainty, Julia donned her black jumper and paired it with her favorite Mary Janes, the ones that clicked against the ground with a reassuring rhythmic sound, echoing her tentative yet determined steps. The air was heavy with the threat of a storm, matching the tumult brewing within her as she ventured into the night, her heart laden with a cocktail of thrill and trepidation. As she navigated the dimly lit streets of Biloxi, lost in the rush of freedom and the calming repetition of her footsteps, 
Julia found herself wandering closer to the outskirts of town, the boundary lines of her usual roots blurred by her growing boldness. It was only when the stark outline of the police station came into view, an unintended landmark on her nocturnal journey, that a surge of sobering clarity gripped her. Her pace slowed, the previous rhythm of her steps now faltering under the weight of sudden fear. Before she could retreat, the beam of a flashlight cut through the darkness, a voice calling out, Miss, could you stop for a moment? The formality of the address did little to soothe the spike of panic that shot through her. As the police car pulled up beside her, the reality of her situation settled in like the cold that seeped through her jumper. The officers, their expressions unreadable in the dim light, stepped out. We just need to ask you a few questions. One of them said, his tone gentle yet firm. Julia's response was a nod, her throat tight with anxiety. The initial civility of the encounter gave way to scrutiny as they noticed the incongruence between her appearance and the nervous masculine timber of her voice. What are you doing out here dressed like this? The questioning continued, the curiosity in their tone sharpening into suspicion. Julia's mind raced, grasping for an explanation less vulnerable than the truth. I, I lost a bet, she stammered, the lie clumsy and unsatisfying even to her own ears. The officers exchanged a look, skepticism etched across their faces. Look, cross-dressing isn't a crime, but being out here dressed like this could get you into trouble, one officer warned, his words laced with an unspoken judgment that made Julia shrink. They took her ID, and as one officer checked it against their records, the other took photographs, first of her in her outfit, then without her wig, stripping her of her dignity one snapshot at a time. The coldness of the concrete against her back as she stood for the photos was matched only by the chill of realization that coursed through her. This was the exposure she had always dreaded, the vulnerability she had skirted around with every careful step in heels. When they finally let her go with a stern warning about the dangers of her actions, especially under the guise of night, the relief of not being detained was overshadowed by a profound humiliation and fear. The walk back home was one of the longest of her life, each step heavy with the burden of what had transpired. That night, Julia faced more than the flashing lights of a police car. She faced the stark reality of her existence in a world still rigid and unyielding. The encounter with the police was a harsh illumination of the societal boundaries still firmly in place, boundaries that she had, until then, only dared to blur in the safety of shadowed streets. As she closed the door behind her, the safety of her apartment felt more like a cell, confining her once more to a world where understanding and acceptance were perhaps just out of reach. In the quiet aftermath of her encounter with the police, Julia retreated into the solitude of her apartment, the walls of which seemed to close in with each passing moment. The vibrant sanctuary that once held so much freedom now felt like a stark reminder of the limitations imposed upon her by the outside world. As she peeled off her jumper and set aside her Mary Janes, the gravity of her situation settled heavily upon her shoulders. Her reflection in the mirror no longer bore the image of a woman liberated by the night, but rather one haunted by the harsh truths of her reality. Over the following days, Julia found herself trapped in a reflective silence, replaying the events over and over. Each replay sharpened her resolve. The fear and humiliation she had endured were potent, yet they were not enough to extinguish the truth of her identity or her desire to live authentically. It became clear that Biloxi, with its suffocating constraints and the shadows that had both veiled and exposed her, could no longer be her home. With a mix of sorrow for what she was leaving behind and hope for what lay ahead, Julia began to plan her departure. She sought out communities known for their inclusivity, places where the spectrum of identity was celebrated rather than merely tolerated. Her research painted pictures of distant cities like San Francisco or New York, places with vibrant LGBTQ communities where she might not just survive, but thrive. The decision to leave was not made lightly. It required not only the abandonment of her physical home, but also a reevaluation of her inner landscapes. Each item she packed was a memory, each memory a lesson learned, about courage, about fear, and about the necessity of seeking out one's own place in the world. 
Julia's journey from Biloxi was as much a metaphorical passage as it was a physical one. As she drove away, the city fading in her rearview mirror, there was a palpable sense of shedding an old skin, of leaving behind the Biloxi blues that had both defined and confined her. Her arrival in a new city marked the beginning of a true exploration of her identity. The vibrant, bustling streets were a stark contrast to the quiet, shadowy roads of Biloxi. Here, people wore their identities proudly, a spectrum of expressions and realities coexisting with a harmony she had only ever dreamed of. Julia found herself walking these new streets not with the trepidation of before, but with a cautious optimism. The lessons she carried with her, forged in the quiet moments before mirrors and in the nerve-wracking encounters of past nights, guided her steps. She joined support groups, connected with others who shared her experiences, and slowly, the weight of her past fears began to lift. In this new beginning, there was no need for the cloak of night to explore her identity. Julia lived openly, her days filled with genuine interactions and her evenings spent in the company of friends who understood and celebrated her journey. The freedom she experienced was profound, not because the world was entirely safe or accepting, but because she had found her community, her place. As the story of Julia's transformation concluded, it was clear that her journey was not just about escaping the confines of a small town, but about moving towards self-acceptance and community acceptance. Though the road was fraught with challenges, the destination, a life lived true to oneself, was worth every difficult step. In her new home, Julia found not just safety, but a vibrant life colored by the broad strokes of acceptance and the detailed hues of personal fulfillment. Throughout Julia's journey, subtle hints were woven into the fabric of her narrative, alluding to a past that shaped her present more profoundly than the clothes she wore or the makeup she applied. These hints, scattered like breadcrumbs, painted a picture of a life marked by restraint and yearning, glimpses of a past that was as colorful as it was constrained. As Julia transitioned from John to Julia, the shadows of her former life in a conservative small town loomed large. She had once been engaged to a woman who, initially amused and intrigued by Julia's interest in cross-dressing, had introduced her to the world of makeup and women's fashion. Their relationship, however, began to crumble under the weight of societal expectations and personal insecurities. Her fiancé's support turned to skepticism and then to scorn, as what was once a playful exploration became an essential expression of Julia's identity. This breakup was not merely the end of a relationship, but a liberation from an unacknowledged prison. These undercurrents of her past were thrust into the stark light of reality during Julia's tense encounter with the police. As the officers probed her appearance and questioned her presence on the streets at night, Julia found herself inadvertently revealing more than just the superficial details of her situation. Her responses, edged with the anxiety of discovery and the pain of past judgments, hinted at deeper layers of trauma and repression. One officer, perhaps more perceptive or perhaps more empathetic, noted the disparity between Julia's poised appearance and her fragmented answers. Is this just about tonight? Or is there more to this story, he asked, his voice a mix of professional curiosity and genuine concern. It was then that Julia, caught off guard by the direct question, found herself divulging the grief of her broken engagement. She spoke of the stifling expectations that had confined her true self, and how her former partner's inability to accept her fully had led to a cascade of self-doubt and repression. The police, initially brusque and authoritative, shifted their approach upon hearing Julia's heartfelt confession. Their subsequent actions, though still procedural, were tinged with a newfound understanding. While they still took the photographs and issued their warnings, their parting words were less of a threat and more of a cautious advisory, reflecting their recognition of Julia's struggle with her identity versus societal norms. This curious element of intrigue, revealed in the most vulnerable of settings, served to deepen the reader's understanding of Julia's motivations and the psychological complexity of her life as a cross-dresser. It wasn't merely the thrill of defiance or the allure of femininity that drove her. It was a profound need to align her external world with the rich, intricate identity she harbored within. 
This revelation not only framed her actions in a more poignant light, but also set the stage for her eventual decision to seek a new beginning, a place where her past did not dictate her future, but informed a more accepting, open-hearted present. <laughs>